Attention all listeners, this podcast is now sponsored by the author of XI, a collection of poetry on being human, written by Andrew Joseph Zaragoza Jr. Release date is going to be August 15th. Pre-order is available now. More information located on the bio. Thank you, and looking forward to hearing from you soon. Now on with the podcast. All right, what is going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to the Miles Horror Podcast. It has been a cool minute since we've sat down with these two lovely ladies. Uh, they have uh, revolutionized the podcast game, of course, the horror comedy genre that is, and they have just done an amazing job in the last year since we've saw, uh, seen them. They've hit 100 episodes, too, as well, uh, so they're in the triple digit gang as well, and they've just been killing the game with this podcast. Uh, please welcome to our show, Kim and Ket, Stay Alive, Maybe. Hello. Hey, how are you? It has been a while. It, 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 you know, it's it, we're doing good. We're, we're hanging in there. It's quarantine. We're trying to make the best of what we can, all of us. So. Yes, yes, Ooh. yes, yes. Aren't we all? Yeah, right? It's It's been a cool minute since we sat down with you guys. So how you guys been doing? Really you know, good. <laughs> <laughs> podcast wise, amazing. Yeah, podcast wise, things are things are going great. Um, I think we definitely miss seeing each other in 3D. Um, I know. We have the we have the podcast to you know stay connected. So that's been right. amazing. Right now, and you guys, you, <laughs> you just hit a hundred episodes recently we did it's like, so bananas right i mean I, I remember when we hit 100 episodes like i was i couldn't believe it that we kept on doing it for this long right so it's how, like, how yeah, was, it makes sense how was that experience for you guys i mean you guys have been you, you've been doing this since the start uh with with your podcast of course every week reviewing another movie playing your guys' amazing game that i love listening to every single week uh oh, thank you how, how was it just doing that keeping up with it for another a couple episodes since we've seen you guys uh well i think it was it was really cool for a lot of different reasons it was definitely a lot of work but that work meant that we like had to dive back into ourselves right. and so in a way i mean i don't know if it was the same for you kim but i mean we have the same brain so probably was <laughs> but True. um what it did was like, you know, things have been so difficult and everyone feels so drained and sort of despondent. And to be able to like dive back into this thing that automatically gives Kim and I so much like energy and makes us feel like we're doing something that we're supposed to be doing. It was actually really rejuvenating, I would say, the hundredth right. episode. Yeah, I agree. Like it was just so much fun because um, we did like a clip show that was kind of just like looking back at like a bunch of different episodes and things. And um, it was like same way though, like that you said, Anthony, where it's just like, I can't believe we like have done it that long. <laughs> like It's crazy. It's so crazy. And it doesn't actually feel like that. Like no. it doesn't. Uh, and we have our two year coming up in a couple weeks as well. Congratulations. So Congratulations. Two years. That's Thank huge. You. Thank too. you. But it's like, I feel like we just started this, so I don't really understand what two years means. I don't know what that <laughs> Two years is. just another day at the office. Time flies when yes. you're having fun. Yeah. I definitely agree uh, with that whole time flies when you're having fun, because the fact that our channel will be three years um, in just a few weeks is wild to me. Oh, congrats. That is, thanks. And also, Congrats to you all for reaching almost two years and uh, getting to that 100th episode. What would you say is the biggest change from episode one to episode 100? <laughs> Do you know what? I actually forgot, and we didn't mention this on the 100th episode because I didn't even remember it happened. Um, Ooh, are but... we getting exclusive content here? <laughs> exclusive yes. Exclusive on the Nights um, of War. So episode one, we were just like trying it out. We were like, let's record a couple episodes and see if we even like like what we're doing or if this like makes sense right. um and so we had one microphone that oh, we yeah. were sharing <laughs> <laughs> yeah like i don't even remember doing that so we, we recorded five episodes shared a microphone i guess <laughs> like didn't know what the fuck we were doing <laughs> yep we sure did we sat on kim's we sat on kim's couch and we had the mic between us with our drinks and so like we were just kind of squished on the couch together and we would lean forward when it was our turn to talk and it was <laughs> just you know just us sitting on the couch gabbing yeah 
that, and that yeah. that hasn't changed. That's still what we do. But yeah, exactly. <laughs> I would say like another big difference is like the podcast has now become like kind of what is natural and normal now. And now there's like other stuff that we're like learning and growing, like right. having a Patreon and like merch and then like doing videos and video editing and creating merch. Like I, there's just like so many other things that like those are now like the new things that we're like using one microphone on currently. <laughs> yeah. I, I definitely I definitely think that's one of the things that makes you guys' podcast so special outside of the game, which is wonderful, is you guys' gab. I think that mm -hmm. because it, you guys use it as an opportunity to, to hang out with one another, I guess you guys have a vulnerability with the audience um, and you get to share different parts of your life um, as well as, you know, reviewing some really great horror movies and some really not so great and horror movies. And some not so great horror movies. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that, that's very true. Very yeah. True. Yeah. yeah. I, I think, and I don't know if, I know we've said this before. Um, I don't know if we've said it here, but that was one of the most surprising things for, uh, for Kim and me was that we knew that we were diving into this horror community people that had been there for a long time right. you know much longer than than we have that's part of part of why we're able to do our podcast is because we're not like just immersed in every horror movie that's ever come out and things like that so we were kind of expecting that like the horror content was going to be the thing that people gravitated towards and it's been so humbling and cool to see that people are like coming back for our relationship because that's right. the thing that kim and i just that we're that's just us that's just you us know? yeah <laughs> we're very much just us like on yeah. the podcast yeah there's not really going to be any situation where we run out of content for that so right. cool if you like us we got plenty of that <laughs> Just tune in every week to get your your uh, your uh, daily your weekly dose of, of Kim and Kit, man. That's you know, exactly. If you're not a horror fan, I mean, just listen to Kim and Kit. That's it. Uh, you know, you'll, <laughs> you'll be you'll become a horror fan overnight just listening to their podcast. Yeah. Um. Yeah. No. I. I that's one of my favorite things about your podcast. I. I, I remember we brought that up last time. Was uh, I, I just love the relationship that you two have. Every every start of the podcast is like you guys take a, you know a few minutes just to talk about what's going on in your lives and and how you know things are going with you guys and especially you know now more than ever we're, we're in a, you know we're in a global pandemic of course and you know with everything going on in the world I mean it's just good to you know every now and then just sit with your best friend and just talk because yeah uh, I, I've noticed right now especially like a lot of people are just kind of out there have no one to talk to and. You know, have have kind of just really nothing, and and it's stuff like these podcasts and and just hearing you two talk and wherever it may be, whoever all content creators around the world, um, just kind of take a couple minutes or a couple hours of your time and just listen and just enjoy it. And that's what I, I that's one of the biggest things I love about your podcast is, you know, it starts with let's talk about a little bit of what's going on in our lives, and then <laughs> let's let's jump into the movie, which I think, you know, not a lot of people do, you know around this time they don't like to get in dig deep in their personal lives you know so yeah well we definitely i know that um i hope that kim can say the same but i i think it, it we make we make each other feel safe right i think that's 100%. a big part of it that because we feel safe with each other we kind of are, are able to dive in to things that yeah like for the most part a lot of times I like forget that we're talking into a microphone. <laughs> yeah. Half the time I'm just like talking to my best friend, Ketrin. Um, but I do think also we have gotten a lot of like positive reinforcement on those factors, you know, where people do like write to us and like thank us for being really vulnerable or like um, just different ways it's like affected them or like helped them or something, which is like really humbling and like something I was never expecting. Um, so it does like give me the courage to keep being that like kind of open and vulnerable because otherwise so it's definitely a little scary <laughs> right yeah that's so true kim that yeah it's i the experience would be very different if people were like shut up <laughs> uh, yeah. I, I completely agree it, it's it's especially yeah like i said now more than ever i think a lot of people are are really uh, just happy to have these these podcasts to listen to and these this content to watch just so it gives them, it escapes them from that reality that 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 is this ugly world right now, um, and I, I yeah. that's why I'm I'm really proud that uh, as us as content creators we get to make that content. And when we hear the feedback from the, the fans and the audience that 
you know, you know, thank you for this. You know, I was having a bad day, and this kind of was something that I look forward to. And just hearing those comments, like, I'm just this small 21-year-old kid who lives right here in this small town, like, right outside of Los Angeles. And I, I decided to pick up a camera and talk about haunts. And it expanded way more than I ever thought it would. And mm -hmm. now I'm getting this feedback. It's just like, I never, like, I never, you know, I, I just thought I'd just voice my opinion. I, I'm so glad that you guys are liking the content. And that's why I keep doing what, that's what we as a team just keep doing as we do. And I can probably yeah. speak for you guys too. That's <clears> why <throat> you guys continue to do what you guys do because the fans just love what you guys do. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Right. It, it, it definitely helps. Yeah, no. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I love that. So I, I look forward every week when I get the notification, whether it be YouTube or on my Spotify, uh, to, to listen because that's something I, that, that's something that definitely helps me get by work, especially uh, mm -hmm. with with the with the bosses that I work with. It's just it's too much. Oh. At work. So it's, it's <laughs> definitely something that helps me get by every every week. And I even got my coworker into the podcast, so that's good. Oh, thank Yay! you. I love hearing that. Mm. <laughs> that makes I, I me so happy. I think another favorite part of my uh, my experience with Kim and Kat Stay Alive, maybe, uh, has been you guys' description of the movies. Um, you guys <laughs> have some very interesting descriptions sometimes. Um, like, I was watching your Conjuring 2 one a little while back, um, and I just felt like I was watching the movie again. I was like, okay, this is about to happen. This Yay! is about to happen. Um, oh, that makes so, me so happy. That's not the direction I thought you were going to go. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, we could also go the other direction. Uh, with some a of the of other, and, <laughs> a little bit of both. Yeah. You know, the, <laughs> yeah. Yin and yang, right? And especially because yeah. Sammy is like terrified of that movie. So I think having you guys explain it even more, joking around and everything, I think just gives them some ease to watch that movie again too. Oh, good. Yeah, well, yeah definitely. Because uh, uh, if Valid comes in my room at night, uh, it's been it's been fun. Someone, got if Valid comes in my room tonight, someone's getting a bat to the face. Yeah, Sam. <laughs> Whether it's me hitting myself because I'm stupid enough to probably do that, or it's her, someone's getting a bat to the face. <laughs> yeah, Sam, just just call us. We'll we'll help you out. There it is. The next yeah, one definitely. Got you. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Um, next time I'm, you know, I have a Bible in front of me and I write and name it. I'm gonna make sure I keep that in my head. <laughs> That be, yes. That's a very honestly, that's a very good live stream idea. Let's watch a horror movie with Kim and Kat. <gasps> We'd be into that. That'd be yeah. really fun to do. For sure. Um, um, so for the audience who doesn't know here, how long does it typically take you guys to to get through one of these horror <laughs> movies on the podcast? <laughs> Ooh, That's such a long time. Like That's the watching time. of it and taking notes? Everything from the start. Yeah, the process of watching to taking notes oh, wow. to actually recording. How long, how long does it take you guys usually? I would say it usually takes like double the time of the movie. Right. Mm -hmm average yeah um because we stop and start a lot and are taking notes like taking like detailed detailed notes right so yeah so it's usually like around four hours or something for the movie some for, <laughs> for whatever reason sometimes it feels like it takes me a whole day i, I don't know yeah. how it happens i feel the I same know, way so weird <laughs> yeah <laughs> but yeah that can t that probably takes the longest I, and yeah, then for sure. the recording is however long the episode is i mean we don't really right. change yep. much we cut edit. out some pee breaks but <laughs> Yeah, we take very, very little out of it. And Kim and I, the last, you know, I don't know, 20 episodes or something, we're like, how is this almost three hours? <laughs> but I, I think I think we've got to the bottom of it that, like, we're getting better at watching the movies, right. which means we're taking in more detail, which means it takes us longer to tell it. And then I also think, you know, we've gotten the go ahead from our Sammies that they don't mind when we go off on tangents or talk about ourselves. <laughs> so here you go. Right. Yeah. No. And that's I think that's the thing about about you ladies is that um, I like how detailed you guys get in that. When you guys were when you were just telling me right now that it takes about maybe four hours to sit down and watch a movie. I remember actually one podcast. I think one of you were sitting in the theater taking notes. Uh huh. We've both done that. And it's just yeah. an interesting experience. Just doing that yeah. alone, it's like you know you oh, can't use man. your phone because everybody will probably get mad at the brightness. So you're like probably at the edge of the seat right there, trying to get the light just to write the the, the stuff down. Um, yeah. It, that's, well, Kim, that's Kim, no the last good trick. <laughs> The last one I did, I like happened to go to like a 1 p.m. showing or something like that on like a Tuesday. Yep. And so I was 
actually the only person in the theater. Nice. So I like did pull out my phone. I was like, well, let's uh, take care of business in here. All right, just, <laughs> just save me. me. <laughs> just save me a ton of writing. I just I could just text it now. It's, it's even better. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> right. Uh, no, but I think that's what the commitment. Just doing that alone week after week uh, is a huge thing for this podcast. Is I, I I just don't think a lot of people know behind the scenes of of how much it goes into just to do one episode. You know, and that's yeah. that's a lot of commitment between you two. And I I, I praise you for that because. Yeah. I would probably go insane doing that. <laughs> well, and I and I yeah. do have to also say that um, you know, obviously Kim and I do a lot of work, but the uh, the editing part of it, like the technical part of it, is all Eric. Right. So that's huge. Like right. if we had to also do that, and you know, he's working forty hours a week and then also editing our podcast. So right. it's uh, you know, it's it's definitely a team effort for right. sure. Yeah. Shout out to but Eric, yeah, like you know, even he, with time, we you don't see at all. He, you know, he's the one <laughs> behind the scenes too, doing a yeah. lot, of, doing as much work as the ladies do. So shout out to Eric. <laughs> um, but yeah, because even after the recording, it's like then we have to listen to the whole thing right. to like give Eric the notes, and then we do a ton of social media. Like we run all of our social medias and Patreon and everything else. So yeah, it definitely adds up. Right. <laughs> yeah. No, but it's hopefully for uh, pretty soon down the line, you guys can make it a full time job. Yes. Yep. We're on Dream. our we're on our way. That's definitely definitely the goal. Right. Man, if my full time job was to sit on a couch and talk to my best friend. That is the dream. Living the dream. I mean, look at Kevin Smith. <laughs> Kevin Smith does it. That guy's the king of podcasting. So if Kevin right? Smith can do it, you know the guy who made Clerks and I love all his movies. You know he made Clerks with a credit card that maxed out and and ended up becoming like the podcast king of today. If he can do it. There's no doubt in my mind you ladies can do it. Aw, thanks. Thanks. Definitely, man. There's no doubt in my mind right there because he does like what, like four or five podcasts and that guy <laughs> he's loving Yeah, it. he's he's always he's on a, something. Yeah, he's, he's a busy, busy fellow. Yeah, he is, man. I don't think he has gets a day off ever at all. But um yeah. Uh, um so another question I have for you all, has anyone gotten a perfect score yet on an episode? No. No. Come on. No. Definitely but like, not. We've definitely gotten close. I feel like I've gotten close in the question portion. Mm -hmm. And then I always lose on the dead or alive. <laughs> I, I fuck that well, up constantly. <laughs> except now we're learning that apparently episodes one through 100, Kim was going to be terrible at the dead or alive. But it is shaping up to be that episodes 101 through 200 is me being terrible at dead or uh -oh. alive. Now the switch like is flipped. Yeah, so I think in general, Kim and I tend to do pretty well in terms of like getting ourselves out of a situation. Yeah. I'm yeah. terrible at figuring out what the characters <laughs> do. Uh, but luckily, you know, our podcast isn't about winning. Hey, right? <laughs> uh, I think the day someone gets a perfect score will be a, a new thing on the on the podcast. That's merch worthy right there. Like, Oh, yeah. That would be but what would oh we even God. do? That would be there bananas. has to be a trophy be or a title of some sort, like perfect score champion or something like that. You know, it's yeah. like until someone else can get a perfect score, like you're that reigning champion. And here, here's, here's where my wrestling yeah. knowledge comes in. Yeah, we get right like a there. WWE belt. Right? Yes. <laughs> oh, Kim, I love that's that idea. Great. Yeah, and it's and it's cool because they got websites where you can make even a custom belt, so you can make a custom Kim and Kim belt. Oh. <laughs> I and love it. Gee, I'm newly motivated. <laughs> <laughs> then we're constantly battling over the belt. The, co the competition just, the stakes just went high in the podcast now. Every week it's yes. like who's defending the belt, who's going to win it yeah. first. It's like, uh, yeah, the stakes we just could got also, raised on this podcast. I was also thinking if we had like a trophy, it would be like a golden bell. Oh, yeah. Like, <laughs> the the that ring is definitely, ding ding it's a must. I mean, that's a, another staple of the show right there. The gold, yeah. who, who wins the golden bell? The golden bell. Right. Oh yeah. I'm gosh, I'm I'm just I'm so reinvigorated. I just want to go <laughs> record an episode right now. <laughs> You're like, I gotta get that perfect score, man. It's gonna yeah. motivate every week for you guys to get a perfect <laughs> score because it's just gonna be that way. Yeah. I love it. Uh -huh. I love it. <laughs> Look, I gonna I see in Kim's eyes, she's ready and Kat's she's even she's even more motivated now. <laughs> she's like, All right, we're, we just turned the Mindless Horror podcast into an episode of Kim and Kat now. We're gonna start right now. Right. Yeah. <laughs> right now. I love it though. I mean that that's that's something cool. I will say Dead or Alive is really impossible. You get a character it and is. you're like 
um, does that name sound like it's going to die? Yeah. That's, right. that's all you get. And half I'll the time we don't even use the name of the character. We use, you know, <laughs> whatever we know is going to be the thing that came into our heads. So right. it's like, yeah. Like a description or something. I love that. Yeah. Yeah. That's, or, I think that's the hardest part about the thing too, is like, you know, you're just given the character and then as you go on, just, you start realizing, okay, this character is probably an asshole. <laughs> it's just it's just like flipping a coin right yeah basically we just have to become psychic to to win that part I pretty agree. much yeah yeah or you secretly watch the, the movie before that's where the, that's where the stakes oh get in gosh. right there that would be such a betrayal oh man no, we would never do that to each other would it? that's the 11th i like to be surprised that's too, the 11th so. commandment right there thou not shall watch the horror movie before the podcast <laughs> that's so true oh my gosh maybe we should come up with the 10 commandments for kk sam oh, dude, that'd, be, that'd be awesome i could just see that on a t-shirt right there i would so buy that there we go right there i would making buy it that. tonight the, yep. the, the 10 commandments of, of kim and Kat, and these are the 10 rules you cannot break no matter what <gasps> Oh my gosh, that's such a good idea. It's like this is the right. ideas podcast now. We're I know. Oh, no. Thank you so much. Nice. Yeah. Start taking notes. Oh yeah. Jeez. We're happy this to help. Great. Any way we can. <laughs> this, um, is, this is gold. So a hundred. Now you're at a hundred. Now you're, you're going forward. What? Uh, so I know. Obviously, this year you guys probably had a lot of things planned uh, pre-pandemic. Uh, one of the things that I remember and loving a lot was going to the live show at the comic book store. Because not, yeah. only, not only was it you two doing a live show, but it was at a comic book store. <laughs> yeah. That was so fun. Um, that was so, God, that was so fun. Right. We, yeah. had two, we had two shows planned uh, before the world. Literally, like, the day before, like, quarantine was, like, officially initiated in Los Angeles. Right. Yep. We were supposed to have a live show. And yeah. We canceled it, and then we were supposed to do one in Chicago. We were gonna start wow. traveling. Yeah, um, Kim and Kat on the road. Yeah, yeah. and also canceled. Obviously. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But we're gonna we're gonna get back there. I right. believe yeah. we're gonna get back there. Just wear a mask, get that vaccine going. We can do this. Right. We Stay can do inside that. unless you have to go somewhere. Absolutely. Yes. All that fun stuff. You know? Yes. We're Thank all you. we're all miserable together, but if we uh, if we <laughs> do our part, we can be less miserable. Yes, let's exactly. all be miserable together. <laughs> I mean, you got you got Kim and Kat every week, man. That should not make you miserable. Come on, I mean, yeah. That would not make me miserable. I'm listening every week and I'm laughing my ass off. <laughs> Thanks. We're just you know trying to do what we can in this in this apocalypse. Right. So with that being said, of course, you guys mentioning going to Chicago. What are all the, what are other dream places you would love to do a live show in? Like what cities? What what uh, states? Wherever. I, I would love to do a show in Baltimore. Nice. Um, I was going to say hometowns. Like, I'd love to do one in Philly. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So those are the two that I think would be the top of our list. And then in general, for me, it's anywhere that wants to buy a bunch of tickets. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> That's the city I want to go to. Right. I'll go to, you know, I'm I'll go to go anywhere. Anywhere. Right. Yeah. Um. So... Definitely, because I, I, I mean, like I said, going back to Kevin Smith, I mean, he's got the Hollywood Improv that he's at every week, uh, the Scum and Villainy Cantina, which is also in Hollywood, which I want to go to so bad because it's Star Wars themed, um, you know, and he goes around mm -hmm. the thing. So I, I could see exactly you guys taking the show, having like a little world tour kind of thing. Oh, yeah, that would be real. And, and you <laughs> know, a lot of venues are also during the pandemic, um, a lot of venues are creating uh live show zoom opportunities mm -hmm. like i know flappers in burbank actually um one of our best friends is uh i don't know when when is this coming out this episode that we're talking this on is right going now? to be coming out next wednesday oh, okay so it will have passed but like uh one of our best friends is doing a show at flappers in burbank even though she lives in chicago right. so there's cool stuff like that that you know is happening would you guys if be open to, to doing a, a – I've been seeing these a lot happen too, especially a lot with concerts. Would you guys be open to doing a, a, a drive-in show? Ooh. That's sure. Well, yeah. add Why that not? to the idea list. Right? <laughs> that's, that's Instead of a ding-ding, like ding, we get a honk-honk. Yeah, yeah. yeah. 
<laughs> oh my god you guys this is is this just a brainstorming a session brainstorming did you just podcast. invite us to a brainstorming session for <laughs> just secretly having great. a meeting there's not you know we're just yeah it's not a podcast anymore it's a meeting at this point holy crap. i'm glad we're recording this though so i can i can go back and be like it. all right yeah, that exactly. was a good one. <laughs> yeah 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 no yeah wow. I, I i've been seeing those a lot lately um i know that's interesting one of my favorite bands sublime with rome is doing a a concert at a drive-in where like all these cars park around a stage and there's different tiers that you can buy so where you know obviously the closer you get it's a little bit more expensive but right um the fact that I, you know you could pay like 330 dollars and you have four people in your car i mean that's kind of like that would be about yeah. how much you would pay for four tickets or something because right. the I way mean... they do it is like as long as everyone can get into a seat belt it's fine, you know, wow. because I know drive-ins are really strict with a lot of people usually trying to sneak in and stuff. So um, drive-ins are really coming back right now. Um, so are, yeah. I would love to see a, a, a KK Sam podcast at a, at a drive-in. That'd be cool. Wow. Listen. Hey. Rad. Any drive-ins I... out there? Paramount. What's another drive yeah. that's out here? Oh, I don't see. That's what I don't even um, know. There's I don't a even... couple of ones I've been seeing around the area. Like there's like three big ones around the area. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. One of them just hosted um, again with Kevin Smith, uh, his his fiftieth birthday bash or fifty one, and they screened his movie. He did a live Q and A there, and he had like I guess he has a movie pop up that I've been to the movies pop up uh, store in Hollywood, and they catered and everything. But everybody came out, everybody bought tickets, and so just seeing stuff like that, I'm just like, okay, like I would like to see more of this if this is the case for now for quarantine right now you know man we're gonna have to put you on the payroll bud (laughs) (laughs) hey i'm just happy to be you know i'll just i don't i don't need to get paid i just you know (laughs) just you know let me come and record this thing and yeah man for youtube and it's good to go yeah this is great so but no i i think uh yeah i mean i i see you guys can go doing more live shows in the future i loved what you guys did with the first live show and i was so happy to be part of the first live show just to be there in, in person and we I, were so honored to have you there no yeah, thank you was, guys so much for coming that was really cool that was a fun day uh sadly i wasn't old enough to drink the beer yet but <gasps> rest assured if i was i would have had i, oh, I probably would've, i probably would have emptied the cake i would <laughs> i would have i would have snuck you some beer if i had known and you know. that's all good I had to drive anyway, so I had to be responsible. Oh, fair enough. Then no, I would not have snuck you. Yeah. <laughs> um, but no, I, I think that the future of uh, Kim and Ket is very strong. Um, you guys are getting sponsors, which is awesome. Um, that's really cool. I've been hearing the, the sponsors for um, – you guys have a hot sauce right now and that, that's sponsoring El you. Yes. Yeah, and uh, it is – I use it. In actuality, this is not an ad. I use it on almost all of my meals. So <laughs> it is actually pretty delicious. That's, that's um, good. Very spicy. Makes me sweat, which I'm into. Right. But Adrian loves to sweat while she eats. I do, food, but it's man. it's real spicy. That's real good spicy. to know because my, uh, my dad loves chili. So, I mean, and I'm, I'm, I'm okay with chili, but, you know, I try to go with the mild. I think your dad Me would too. love these, honestly. Oh, yeah. There's about 427,000 different flavors of theirs. So oh my God. I, I think you're not literally that many. But, <laughs> but you know, no, your your dad would, uh, this is, do your Christmas shopping early. That's right? what we're doing. Get, get him some uh, hot sauce on uh, with a side of some Superman stuff because he's a huge Superman fan. Aww. There you go. I think he'd like it. He'd, he'd be very happy with that if I got him some like Superman underwear with some uh, hot sauce. <gasps> Perfect mix. Dude, <laughs> I started my I started my Christmas shopping this week. I'm telling you, while we're all just sitting at home, right? Let's just you know, let's Fine just ahead. get that Christmas shopping done. Because uh, I can tell you this right now, no matter what this pandemic, how far this goes, it's not canceling any of the holidays. Whew! You're from from your mouth to God's ears, right? Hopefully. Oh, I don't I don't care. Yes. Yeah. I mean, our our good friend at uh, OADV Media said it best. You could take away my haunts. You can take away uh, going out to trick or treat, but you can't cancel Halloween because I could still find ways to celebrate it. I love that. Yeah. Oh my gosh, that's such an inspiring message. Right? That's cute. Yeah. We love that guy. Love him so much. <laughs> what you got, Sam? So, I was gonna ask. So, has it been difficult to adjust to doing podcasts away from one another? It definitely took an adjustment period. Yes. It was so weird at first. Right. <laughs> I think we're good now. Like I feel yeah. like we get it, but I 
I was not prepared for how much information I receive from Kim and how much information I am giving to Kim by being in the same room right. that has nothing to do with the words I'm saying. So I felt very um, like I like I didn't have full access to language, if that makes sense, because right. I was like, it's just not the same when you're not in the same room. I don't know. Did you have a yeah. similar experience? For me, like the hardest thing that I like, the thing that I still miss is like, we do like to try to jump scare each other sometimes. Right. And yeah. it's just like, because there's like a slight delay, like, you know what I mean? It's just like, you're not really able to be like, ah! mm-hmm. yeah. um, uh, and like actually scare someone. So uh, that's the thing to me, like, that's a bummer a little bit. Is yeah. Like, yeah. That one's tough. Right. That one's tough. I got a, I got a solution for that. Just turn the volume up on your headphones full blast. You'll get him, which is the slightest thing. Oh. <laughs> but then again, you don't want right. to blow out your ears. So I mean. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. I don't want to blow out my eardrums. Right. <laughs> no, no, that's that's great. And something that I am still waiting for, and I know pandemic either probably caused it to, to hold back a little bit or gave you guys more creative de- ideas for it, is the uh, Kim and Kent movie. Oh, yeah. No, that is still on. That is still you know floating around but yeah it's like i mean even if no matter what stage any project in hollywood is in right Right. now like there is no (laughs) there's no way to do what we would want to do right so there was another thing like right before pandemic that we were like pitching around yeah um that we're trying to do that's like a show situation um, that is literally impossible uh, in the pandemic because right. it yeah. involves people right. meeting people. Um, yeah. So, uh, but on the back burner. Right. Yeah. That, 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 <laughs> because that's, yeah. this too shall pass. It's right. not going to be like this forever. I have right. to say that to myself about 150 times a day. Right. <sighs> right, right. Yeah. No, I agree. And I, I think that's what the one thing I miss so much about just life in general is you know you're seeing uh i had a couple of my favorite tv shows that just got renewed and it's like well we just renewed but we don't know when we're gonna start filming so yeah or or, yeah or or movies that i've i was waiting so long for them black widow to be perfectly example yeah um waiting for that to come out and i'm like yeah we're pushing it back to november now and i'm just like great Mm -hmm. yeah halloween halloween Halloween. it's like next year now yeah yeah a whole year later i know halloween Halloween kills killed us uh no pun intended we have a couple friends who you know obviously work in production and right. some of this sort of I obviously I'm not going to name any of the projects but some of the inside scoop on like what they're having to do in order to film mm-hmm. uh you know specific mm-hmm. like an example would be like crowd scenes mm-hmm. they're literally having to film the scene four five six times exactly the same and and layer the scenes on top of each other wow. so it's like Um, because you obviously you have to have, if it's a crowd, you have to have everybody standing six feet apart. Mm -hmm. So you have to do that as many times as it takes to like plug in those holes. You do it like once and then next to each other and then next to each other and then next to each other and then yeah, all together. So it's like, even just those scenes, you add that up to like, you know, how long shooting a scene normally takes without a pandemic. Like it's like they're shooting, they're shooting one scene every two days potentially. Especially, I know with I know with uh, especially with television production, like they'll take a long time just to film the one scene. Yet alone, yeah. when you're adding that much more work to it, you're taking even longer, so your production is going to be held up even more. Exactly. So you're not going to be able to deliver the same quality or the same amount of episodes you probably usually would. Um, yeah. The one I would think about too. I mean, thank God it's they're they're done with the show, but um, a show like Big Bang Theory, you know, they rely heavily on their live studio audience to to laugh mm, at the jokes right and, and yeah that. and like you imagine like a whole they would have to you know obviously if you have the laugh track you can throw it in but i feel like it's just not the same kind of reaction you know if you're not, used to it especially to it, yeah like it would i'm sure it would throw them off like right you know they're professionals like they'd figure it out but like i bet it would be weird at first for that, sure yeah well because it's also for the writers who are the you know four camera sitcoms that are like 
there, if, if a line doesn't land, they rewrite it on the spot. On the spot. And yeah. the thing that we see is whatever line got the biggest laugh. Mm -hmm. And so if there's no gauge of what got the big laugh, it's like, you know, they're kind of out there floating around in the abyss of whether or not something is going to land, you know, right. our, and our stand up comedian friends are dealing with the same thing, even though they're like doing shows on, you know, zoom, obviously everybody has to be on mute except for the artist, mm -hmm. which means you don't hear anything. You right. hear nothing. <laughs> you just see people laughing, but they look insane. But they're actually, yeah, you know, they're laughing at the jokes, but they just you can't hear it. Um, if they've set up the feed that way, like sometimes they're just looking at themselves, right, and just talking to them. I mean, I f think I'm hilarious, so I would be fine. I would be telling <laughs> the jokes and laughing at myself. So <laughs> you can ask Sammy. That's just me all the time. <laughs> yeah. I <laughs> I completely agree. Doing stand up with no crowd, you're just basically telling yourself a story and trying to yeah, with, yeah. A bunch of punch, with a bunch of punchlines that you don't know are landing. Yeah. That seems like a nightmare. Right. I think it For is sure. a nightmare. I think most people go to sleep and have that nightmare, and it <laughs> is actually what they're having nightmares about. Right. No, I yeah. Because you don't know if you're killing it or if you're really being killed on there. Oh, yeah. yeah so, totally. Yeah. I'm a, I'm a huge fan of stand-up comedy. Um, and so, like, I definitely, like, watch, like, a lot of, like, people's, like, podcasts and things like that in the in the, um, the stand-up game. And I'm, like, I can only imagine how they feel if, like, they had to go up on stage and just not get any reaction. Yeah. Because that's what they, yeah. they live on. Right. Yeah. I mean, that's <laughs> – and, you know, like, especially, like, you know, for example, like, like, like the comedy store in Hollywood. Like, if they can't go and do that 15-minute set to really see what's landing and not landing – then how are they going to be prepared for their 60 minute Netflix special? And like, totally. is it going to be, are they going to be received well? Or are they not going to be received well? Is that yeah, joke crazy. too edgy or is it, or yeah. is it way, yeah. and way not right. going to be received? So I can only imagine how difficult that is. So yeah, for sure. I think my heart goes out to everyone crazy. out there trying to, to write, whether it be in stand up or be for TV or for the movies. So yeah, that's, that's how I feel. Yeah. Right. No, and, and I think it's the same goes the same for uh, sporting events too. Like I've been watching baseball, and I, you know I watch wrestling every week, and it's like, you know, everything sells better when you have that crowd, and especially with baseball right now. I mean, like they literally had to have speakers playing an audience reaction because yep. they're just not used to it. You know, it's like <laughs> so that's, weird. They're, they're so, so weird. used to an audience cheering for them and, and going nuts for plays and stuff, and. <laughs> I'm curious to see. I mean, we've seen what basketball looks like. We've seen what baseball looks like. We've even seen what hockey looks like. The big one that I'm curious to see what's going to look like this year is an empty football, football stadium. Oh football? yeah, that yeah. is going to be nuts. I mean, I mean, look at me. I, I every week, like I said, I watch wrestling, and it's like it's just not the same with wrestling. I mean, wrestling. What sells wrestling is the crowd. Well, I hundred percent because that's right? like think, a show, right? Yeah, I think one of the things that they might be able to do with the NFL. Uh, like they did with the NBA, but couldn't do with baseball was because there's only, there's a finite number of games. Like there aren't games up into the hundreds, like there is for, for baseball. And you're just playing like one matchup per week of the teams. Right. I think it's probably going to look like the NBA where the entire league is in one hotel for the entirety of the season and right. they just play in one stadium right. um because you know the the billionaires that are making money on the nfl they are going to ha figure out how to do this and i think because there Wait, that's what the nba is doing they're all yeah. playing they're in a so well, basically they're yeah so basically any oh. any team that was never going to qualify for the playoffs like their their shot was over they're out they're done Right. So it's yeah. only the teams that were still like had any chance of going to the playoffs. They're all in a hotel in lockdown in perpetuity for the entirety of the season, the entire NBA. That's wow. still playing. But how could football do that if they all so, play basically the same time? Like football every Sunday? easily because can I think do that they would, actually. They would stagger the games. Yeah. Oh, Not only that, you can split yeah. it up between the leagues. Like if, like the West Coast oh, League yeah. is playing on West Coast, then play at one West Coast stadium. East Coast play yeah. at one East Coast. That was the same thing I was suggesting with the uh, World Series because I was like, okay, well, what are they going to do with the World Series? Because, you know, if one team, you know, if both teams win, the, the, with the World Series, usually they go back and forth to different stadiums. 
So I'm just thinking, okay, the easiest thing for the World Series to do this year is just find a stadium that meets in the middle between both teams, play at that stadium. That way everyone can be at a hotel. You're playing at one stadium. You're not traveling back and forth. And yeah, yeah. You you have the, the pandemic more to control, and, you, you know, you really can just kind of keep an eye on everything. And not, not only that, no one gets the home field advantage at that point. So it's right. just it's every man's game. Uh, NFL can easily do the same thing, too, is, like, you know, you, you play at big one big stadium, uh, and then you play at another stadium in the East Coast, and then when it comes down to the Super Bowl, whatever teams, you know, meet in the middle, play at one stadium, like they do every year with the Super Bowl regardless. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. And just do that. I mean, I, I think this year's Super Bowl or next year's Super Bowl was supposed to take place. I think more next year's Super Bowl was supposed to take place in Los Angeles um, yeah. because mm-hmm. of the new stadium. But that's been like it's not on track to finish. So I don't know where that's right. going to be yeah. this year. Or or we just cancel 2020 completely. Right. That's, that's yeah. Well, suggestion. let's just move on. Yeah. yeah. 2019 to 2021. Let's just. Yeah. I've been I've been waiting for the restart button for 2020, like a computer. <laughs> Seriously, just kind of a restart, a reboot. Yeah, yeah. It, it started off oh. horrible with the the Kobe thing, and then it got even worse with this pandemic. <sighs> um, yeah, it, it just you know, government corrupt governments and stuff. It's it's bad. <laughs> it's bad every month. Yeah. It's, just yeah. waiting for the for the zombies or the aliens to come. Not sure yep. what's next. Don't even get my yep. coworker started on aliens because he'll go uh. for like an hour. <laughs> It is hilarious. Yeah. Uh, I got another uh, KK Sam question here. Yeah. Yes, uh, sir. Do you all have a favorite episode? Oh, besides, oh. I mean, I know all of them are your favorite, but is there no, like, I, one I, that stands out? That is uh, tough. I f- want yeah. to say. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. My Some of my favorites are Trick or Treat because it's um iconic line the, uh <laughs> yeah like it's a from the the very beginning it's like episode 12 or something like that right. and it like started like burps map which is basically our mascot now which we'll talk about later um yeah. and so that's like has like a little place in my heart i feel like mm-hmm. i don't know it's like really kind of where i feel like we got in the groove um and kind of like you know found ourselves and then mm-hmm. i think I just love these episodes, I think, just because I love the movies, but I really loved doing um, Tucker and Dale vs. Evil and um, The Final movie. Girls. Yeah. 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 You like doing those. those because you knew they were both going to make me cry. Yes. And, I love it. Yeah. And laugh and like get angry and yeah. all the things. <laughs> I, I usually say... Um, I usually say Trick or Treat as well because I think Kim and I both felt that we had hit on something like we'd kind of gotten over some sort of plateau or whatever that was pro- maybe imperceptible to other people but it, it was definitely like a vibe that Kim and I had when we were recording that and that was the first time uh I I usually really gravitate towards the episodes where like a new character comes out you know like someone that is then referenced for episodes to come because we never know when that's going to happen like there's not there's not any rhyme or reason to why certain characters come out of an episode and then are referenced for multiple episodes later uh so i tend to really like like those a lot right um is there is there now are there times where after you review the movie do you guys go back and like if the one who hasn't watched it do you go and watch it or do you just like at that point you just like I already know what's going to happen I don't care. <laughs> I do. Kim doesn't. <laughs> yeah. I I've done it with some, but that's just like my personality. I yeah, right. kind of like like I said I like to be surprised. So yeah. um, she doesn't it is do interesting anything to twice. See what it looks like as compared to just hearing it and, or, or having it be in my brain picture. But yeah. like, yeah, Ketrin definitely does it more than I do. <laughs> yeah. But what is interesting is I think Kim and I both do this without really thinking about it. If somebody asks us, have you seen this? I say yes. <laughs> and then realize later, I haven't seen it with seen my it. eyeballs. Yeah. I right. saw it through Kim's eyeballs, right. but I would say that I've seen it. Right. Like, yeah, it's always very I weird because I'm like, I mean, I can talk about it. Like, what, what do you want to discuss about it? Because yeah. I know everything, <laughs> but I haven't technically seen it. Right. right. Yeah. No, I, 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 it's hilarious. I, I feel like it's like you're kind of like when you read a book, like because obviously you guys get yes. to 
to picture everything in your own mind at that point. And then you actually get to see it come to fruition on the screen. And you're kind of like, it might have been better in my head. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. I I have often thought that, like, Kim's telling of it was, I like, I'm like, oh, I like that better than the actual movie. And I think it also, like, Kim and I joke about having the same brain. We're actually very, very different. Like we're very, very different different people, but for whatever reason, we do share like a common language. And in the sense that like, we know what the other person is going to need to hear in order to make them see what we want them to see kind of thing. So I think that that definitely makes for a dynamic that I don't really have with anybody else. Right. I think out of the two, I probably relate to Kim the most because I hear about her dating life every week, and I'm just like, oh, same. <laughs> Fucking same. Dude. Well, I'm back at it, yeah, so get ready for more. <laughs> no, I'm just like, same, man. Every week, I'm just like, yep, I've been through that. Yeah. I mean, you hear that a lot, don't you, Kim? That, like, you just kind of give yeah. people, they feel less alone. You know, it's not, it's not, it's not them. It, it doesn't have anything to do with them. It's just dating. Yeah, people yep. relate a lot. But I like I like to hear the stories of, like, the guys that you have went out with in the past are, are still good friends sometimes that you keep up totally. with. Totally. I think that yeah. was on the, on the last episode, too. You, you mentioned that. Uh, the one actually just came out today. I was listening yeah. to a yeah. little bit today. And uh, and that was something that I, I was like, oh, man, yeah. That, I think I've, I have a couple of ex-girlfriends that I still talk to that are really cool. But, you know, the other ones, yeah. I just I just – move on (laughs) yeah kim and i both everybody yeah not everybody but kim and i both stayed friends with a lot of people that we dated and i would say our friend group in general is Mm -hmm. a lot of like people that dated at some point or other so ancestral it is very ancestral (laughs) but in a good way in that like there's not a taboo about it and everyone's just kind of like like my husband's boss right now is a guy that I dated so it's like it 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 all kind of works out and it's like if everybody can just be mature adults about it then yeah. you know I mean if right. you're just expand your fucking friend. dickhead then right. Sure, right. we should be friends yeah <laughs> <laughs> but uh, if Kim ever dates a dickhead then I kill them so <laughs> they're not exactly really yeah situation. I mean I can't be friends because Catherine's murdered them because I've murdered them <laughs> let's be knowing uh well I can speak for myself but you, you got you know I got your back we're going in. We're going full on war. Yeah. There we go. I got some backup now. This is Sammy great. might be a little bit harder because he's in Arizona now, but yeah, you know, uh, I'm a little, I'm a, I'm a little a ways drive. away. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, all right, guys, I'll be there in about four hours. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, no, but I'm I'm glad that the podcast is going so well for you guys. I mean, I I love listening to it every single week, uh, and I look forward to listening to it every single week. And I'm so glad that you guys hit that 100 episode milestone, much like us. So it was really cool too when when you guys. I remember you congratulated us on it. We congratulated you on it, and it was just such a, a big milestone in both of our careers that we stuck to 100 episodes. Let's see if we can do 100 more. <laughs> We're on it. Hell yeah! Right? Hell yeah! So uh, no, I and I, I, I applaud you guys. It's it's not a an, an easy task to do every week, but you somehow managed to pull it off, which is amazing. Uh, they say not all superheroes wear, wear capes, so. Aw, and same to you guys. I mean, you guys yeah. are doing the damn thing as well. Yeah. We're trying every week. I mean, we, we, we make it work somehow, uh, even after Sammy moved Especially to Especially without the haunts. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, we are, we've already gotten uh, uh, we've already gotten plan B, C, D, all the way to Z planned, uh, what we're going to do if, if no haunts happen at all, but. Um, it's looking that way so far, but yeah. it, it's uh, it's definitely been a difficult year, especially the last couple months, finding all the cancellation of the haunts. Uh, Midsummer Scream yeah. was a difficult one. Monster Palooza, all these mm-hmm. different horror events. I mean, we were lo- really looking forward. Some of them was going to be our first time ever going, so we were looking forward to that. Uh. But at the end of the day, I mean, the way I look at it, everything happens for a reason. Um, yeah, totally. It's just, it's just not our time to go yet, and when it is our time, I'm hoping it's going to be a, a great experience for um not only us, but the people who watch our, our content. If they've never yeah. been to it, we can get, we can deliver them that experience of, this is what this convention has to bring. If you ever want to come, uh, this is the dates they usually run. Um, same thing with the haunts. But uh, we have already a lot. We're already looking forward to haunt season. I mean, there's a lot of home haunts that are luckily still happening, so we get to cover those. So th- we're we're calling this oh, the year. Oh, that'll be interesting. The year of the home haunts, man. They have <laughs> they're gonna have a big audience that want to go through these mazes. So this is their year to shine. 
Totally. Cool. I'm excited. Um, but congratulations. You're coming on two years, too, so that's awesome. I can't wait to see uh, what goes forward in the next 100 episodes of uh, Kim and Kat's Day Live, maybe. That's going to be awesome. Thank you. So it wouldn't be the Mindless Horror Podcast without some horror news, and we have some good horror news today. Uh, I want to start off with the big one that got announced recently. Of course, everyone knows Scream 5 is happening finally after all these years. Woohoo! And we are all. I think everyone's excited for Scream 5. I mean, RIP Res Craven, he won't be, of course, involved in the project, but I think. I think the people who are doing this, I have a lot of faith in them. I think they have big shoes to I fill. I do too. I really do too, right. for sure. They have. Huge... I think they get the, they get what people are excited for. Right. In no, terms of Scream Five, they so. they have huge shoes to fill. I mean, it's been, I think 2011 was when Scream Four came out, and uh, wow. I think that really kind of redeemed. The, yeah, it's been some time. It's been like what, wow. um, nine years now. Wow. Um, That's crazy. Yeah, and time flies. I mean, but that, that you know that was uh, that was kind of Wes Craven's comeback to the to the franchise, um, and it was a solid movie, a solid film. So you know, I'm curious to see where they're gonna go with this movie. But the good news is, um, uh, what's his name? David Arquette. He played mm-hmm. the cop. He's coming back. So that's Dewey. awesome. Dewey. Yep, Dewey's <laughs> coming back. We love Dewey. Uh, guys, in real life, the guy is nuts, man. From being a wrestler to just doing everything. He he actually he uh, one funny story about him. He he was actually at a indie wrestling thing. I think in the last two or three years, he actually got hurt when someone hit a glass bulb over him. It actually sliced his neck open mid match. He had holy a, oh shit! My God! He had to go backstage, get it cleaned up real quick, and he came out and finished the match. Oh my God! The guy is nuts, but That's, he's hardcore. <laughs> I did not. I didn't know that the footage is on youtube you actually see him his thing get cut open he holds it with a towel goes backstage gets it as cleaned up as possible goes back out and finishes the match so is that like what he's up to right now so like is that he's always been a wrestling (laughs) fan like i don't know if you've ever seen there's a movie he did back in the 90s called ready to rumble it was okay it was about a uh a a pony uh wrestling brand called wcw that was up against wwf at the time and he was a huge part of that. Like, he actually came out back in the WCW days and actually wrestled. I think he was the world champion for a little bit at that time, too. Um, but the movie is... David Arquette. David Arquette. <laughs> it's all on YouTube. You have to look okay. it up. Like, this actually happened. He's a huge wrestling fan. Um, okay. Making sure. <laughs> but, yeah, he was the world champ at one point. Like, and I was blown away by that. But even in the okay. movie, like, he, he, he wrestles and everything with all these big wrestlers and stuff. It's a funny movie all around. I mean, it got... It's a cult classic, you know, at the time when it came out, didn't get received well with uh, the, the critics, but, you know, wrestling fans love it, and um, it's just an all-out goofy movie. It's about bringing out, like, an old wrestler who had, like, a fallen out in his career, and so they help him come back up to, to win the championship again, which is really cool. I used to wow. work at the Roosevelt Hotel, and I feel like I'm pretty sure he was, like, part owner of this, like, new thing they opened in the bottom that was, like, this, like, very fancy it had to be on the list kind of but like variety show sort of thing right. so it was like people with snakes and oh. all kinds of crazy shit but i think they did like little people wrestling too That's actually great. kim Which, yes like, oh my gosh probably his idea yes you'd be surprised <laughs> i mean if you're not a wrestling fan now you'd be surprised in los angeles how many indie wrestling shows they have and how fun they are because if i suggest if you're gonna go for the first time ever don't sit in the front uh, because hey. they, they are the type of promotion that they warn you on the ticket. You may get hit by the wrestlers, like not intentionally, Damn. not intentionally, <laughs> but like when they knock each other over and stuff and they go into the crowd, you may get hit by them by this accident. This is okay. fascinating. To so me. look it up is... in Los Angeles. There's a lot of indie wrestling promotions out there that. Are, wow! That happen. I do want to go to like the Lucha Vavum one or whatever. Lucha, oh, yeah. Lucha it's at. something. Yeah. I hear that's really yeah. It's I've never, I've never even dipped my toe into the wrestling pool. <laughs> oh really? I used to like it when I was a kid. I watched it with my brothers. Yeah. Did you? Yeah. No, it was never. Yeah. Never my never my thing. But American, nice. American Warrior was that his name? I think he was my oh, favorite. Oh, Ultimate Warrior. Ultimate Warrior. Oh, Eric yeah. just got a doll of the Ultimate Warrior. Wait, he was my on. favorite. Was it, was it a doll or an action figure? Hold on. Oh, an action figure. <laughs> I'm sure it's an action, it's an action figure. figure. I'm, I'm sure Eric would be very mad. Yeah, that's my guy. 
The Ultimate Warrior, man. Sad thing about him, too. I know we're getting off topic, but sad thing about him is, like, <laughs> when he got inducted to the Hall of Fame, like, literally the night after, he was on Monday Night Raw, and then the next day he died. Uh, is this guy's dead? Yeah, he's dead. Yeah. Oh, you, okay, he was but you gotta, when we were kids. You gotta imagine, like, a lot of these wrestlers who came out in, like, the late 80s, 90s, they, they did a lot of steroids growing back then, so it's kind of catching yeah. up to them now. And got a lot of head injuries. Yes, a ton. I mean, yeah. I, when I see a, an old wrestler, like, you know, that wasn't my, my uncle tells me more stories because he grew up r with watching it with my dad. And, you know, I as a wrestling fan, I've gone back like they have the whole network and stuff. I've gone back and actually watched like a lot of the old stuff because it's just so great of how it used to be back in the day compared to what it is now. Um, but I, I, I would go back and watch stuff like that. And a lot of the people that I would watch like that you see now, it's like they're passing away. <laughs> So sad. Yeah. Well, RIP this guy <laughs> that I just learned about. Yeah, RIP Ultimate Warrior. On the bright note about Scream 5, uh, Cordy Cox. Great Cox transition, by the way. Oh, yeah. Nice <laughs> job, <laughs> Sam. Nice job. <laughs> Roping us back in. That's my job with Tony. Sometimes he, 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 takes, a, he takes a path. Y'all want to uh, do an off topic travel. show? Come on, shoot the shit. We'll, we'll talk about it. <laughs> Yeah, that's where that's where he gets to shine because I can't control him on that. Yep. Because anything goes there. At least here, I have to be able to be like, "Hey, let's come back, my we'll friend." Back yeah. So screen. you, so you're the lasso guy. Like you've got, you're the lasso. You lasso us back in. He's my uh, definitely, yep. definitely. That's my job. Is I have a lot of jobs, but that's one of my jobs. <laughs> I wear many hats. Yeah. I wear many hats. But uh, but Sammy, who else is on coming on to the project of Scream Five? Do you know? Uh, that, those are, that's the only one I know. I knew Courtney Cox was coming back. Courtney Cox was is coming back. back. Courtney Cox. I'll send you a copy. Bam. Bam. I'll send you a copy. Bam. Bitch goes down. Yep. I'll send Got you a it. copy. Bam. Sid. Super bitch. That's who we're waiting <laughs> to come back now. I love. I know she's in talks. Right. I, yeah. I think, I, so. I think I would she'll be, come back. I, I would be I think shocked, so too. shocked if she didn't come back. No, she shocked. she owns that franchise. She's been in every yeah. movie. There would not if uh, a scream without her is just not scream at all. I want. I hope Courtney and David like. Well, they're still co-parents, so I'm right. sure. I hope they still get along. I think there's a mutual respect there. I mean, they, they yeah. obviously they gotta be, you know, adults around the professional. Kids. Yeah. And, yeah, and and parent and stuff. So I think there's a call. I mean, when it comes down to acting, though, that that comes down to your job. So it's like, when you, I mean, yeah, I've I've heard drama on sets before, but yeah, I'm like the Hollywood. You know, you can't always you can't, can't always, get what always you want. guarantee. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I, I agree. It's, or it's gonna make a great book in yep. about five years. So, so true, right? Scream five, so disaster. <laughs> Gotta look on the bright side. <laughs> yeah, uh, but no. yeah, I really loved. Um, ready or not like oh, so much gosh, and such like a great basically movie. that whole team is kind of who's making this you know that's the yeah, same directors of one it. of the writers yeah, yeah so it's like that's what gives me faith too and like the way they talk about it like the way that they like honor it like they truly are like this is like what influenced us like yes. the, you know what i mean so it's just right. like one of those things where they like want to like do it justice so i that's what gives me high hopes about it. Right. That's exactly how I feel. Yeah. Right. And that was that's how I was with uh, David Gordon Green and Danny McBride when they did uh, Halloween. I was oh, like, wait, yeah. Man. yeah. I was like, wait, Danny McBride, Eastbound and right? Down, Danny McBride. Wait, what? Right? Eastbound and Down was. Oh man, I love that show. I was like, you talking about the same guy who was on Vice Principals who was cracking jokes <laughs> to kids? Like you, the, right? we're talking about the same Danny McBride, right? Yeah. Uh, and I watched Halloween 2018, and I was like, okay. I was like, Same. what is with these comedians coming out doing horror and nailing it? Right? Well, the th I feel like the thing that people that like aren't in the biz don't know is like just because somebody is known for comedy right. doesn't mean that just happens to be like what they got their break in. But like right. there's plenty of comedic actors that like wear many hats, you know, right. it's just because that's what they're known for doesn't mean that's all that they can do, they can do well they honestly say if you can do comedy you can do anything that's yeah. very true Comedy's like comedy the is the hardest thing to do making people laugh yeah. is the hardest thing to do but no danny mcbride came on but so that's why i have a lot of faith with scream five i mean you got the people who did ready or not when me and sammy saw that in theaters we were blown away. we were expecting walking in theater like this movie's probably gonna suck but you know we have AMC A list, so I'm like, we're not. We didn't pay for the ticket. We're paying for the subscription. Might as mm -hmm. well put our use to it. 
we walked out of that movie like, holy shit. Right? That was mm-hmm. way yeah. better than I thought. Yeah. Kim, is that so one of the ones that you had to sit in the theater? That is the one that I <laughs> took, like, the 1 p.m. matinee yeah. to take notes on. Yeah. So. And, and that's I loved actually it. so excited. And, and that's actually one of the movies I haven't seen, but someone asked me, I don't know when they asked me, but they were like, have you seen Ready or Not? And I was like, yes. And then I was like, <laughs> I have, I have, I, yeah, I've actually not seen it. But in my head, I was like, so I've good. definitely seen it. Right. Ugh. So Scream 5, I, I'm curious to see what they're going to do with this one. I wonder if they're going to do the, the route of Nightmare on Elm Street where they give it the new Nightmare treatment where it's Ooh. affecting the real life. I mean, they kind of already headed down that route with the Scream franchise, of course, with mm-hmm. the, the whole the stab within, you know, the movie within the movie mm-hmm. going on. Yes. So stabs affecting Sydney's real life. Um so I'm curious to see where this is going to go. I mean, I've heard a lot of good fan That'd theories that the killer from the last movie, uh, Emma Roberts, she lived somehow. So oh. that's a good fan theory that I've heard. So I'm curious to see where they're going to go with this one. I, I really am excited. Does that mean that there's hope that Matthew Lillard and Skeet Ulrich will be back? <laughs> that was another Skeet. fan theory because he makes a, a small, brief cameo in Scream 2. Oh, my gosh. There's and, somewhere that I read that, like, Matthew Lillard was like, I'd be down for oh, another yeah. they, movie. They did an interview with him, <laughs> oh and they asked him uh, how he felt about Scoob and everything and not being uh, shaggy. And then he goes, they're like, yeah, they're making another Scream. Would you love to come back? He goes, I am open. I'm waiting for a phone call. Just letting you know that I am available for this project. And I was like, <laughs> I would lose my. I was like, I don't know how they'll bring you back, but if I they know, can right? somehow figure out a way. Uh, yeah. that you didn't die by that television set, then I'm all for it. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I'm excited for that. I know, uh, I don't know if Sammy has seen the screen movies or not. Let's add it to the list. Sammy, have you seen the screen movies? Hey, hey, it is now letting you know that I don't have to add that to the list. That's like one of the first times in history. We wow. do not Yay. have to add it to the list. Yay. I have seen Scream 1 through 4. Good. Wow. wow. That yeah. shocks me. If you think that shocks you, that shocks me. Because That's awesome. I always have to tell this guy, like, we have a streaming service that we share. I'm like, hey, uh, so I bought this horror movie. It's on there. So if you get a chance to watch it, watch it. I think about a month ago, he just watched uh, Doctor Sleep. <gasps> yeah. Ooh, yeah. What did you think? And what else did you watch? Well, I watched Hereditary and Doctor Sleep. For the first time. <laughs> For the first time. Um <laughs> He was very hesitant yeah. about Hereditary because me and him yeah. were not too big of fans of Midsummer. Uh, yeah. Oh, okay. I loved Midsummer. My husband did not. Um, Hereditary, fuck. The mind fuck. Hereditary is like one of my uh, favorites. Every time I watch it, I learn something time. new. I mean, you see all the people hiding out in the, the woods and <sighs> they're naked. Yeah. I'm just like, what is going on? <laughs> I mean, I, Kim and I, Kim and I watching Hereditary was sort of one of the ingredients in the let's start a podcast soup right you know yeah that was yeah. that was like the season <sighs> of the, man. yeah so was yeah. scream actually obviously yep. from mm-hmm. the opening of our show and now every time i hear that quote in the movie i'm just like hey i know that <laughs> <laughs> yeah my my hereditary um review was thought it was a bit overrated unfortunately <sighs> oh no i'm still i'm still i'm still people every time oh i say gosh. that i know uh, but it's also because I did watch one of our other friends discuss the movie prior, so I knew it was going to happen. And I also really wasn't looking forward to the ending scene mm. with the whole piano string. So I spent Ugh. the entire movie just dreading that coming. Ugh. Yeah, that was so, tough. That, was that yeah. may have been the reason why I wasn't as big as a fan as other people are. Jeez, I think it's always hard to watch a movie like after it's come out and big, been such a huge success because then yes. everyone tells you it's amazing. So it's like you have all these expectations. Plus, like if you know what's happening, like part of like the appeal of Hereditary was like, you know, not knowing what was going to happen and it like surprising you and stuff like that. And then like seeing it before anyone even told you anything about it. So yeah. then it's kind of I mean, like, good damn. Tony yeah. Collette. A uh, phenomenal queen. actress, queen. queen. Why does she yeah. not have an Oscar? Right. I don't, I don't know if you guys. I mean, this is non horror related, but I don't know if you guys saw Ready or Not. Yeah, was that, that was the one not? that. No, not, I'm sorry, not, not Ready or Not. Knives Out. <laughs> I don't know why I said Knives Ready Out. Or not. Yeah, 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 yeah. Knives yeah, I did. Out was beautiful. I mean, with the cast and everything, and I don't like that director because. He ruined Star Wars for me. But uh, when you give um, him his own movie and his own script Ryan and Johnson. his own vision, he can do something phenomenal. Yeah. Just don't give him yeah, Star Wars. I, I really liked Knives Out. 
Knives Out was great, though. But, uh, yeah, I, 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 I always have to give uh, Sammy some horror movies to watch and be like, hey, yeah. they're on our streaming service. Go watch them, especially now more than yeah. ever. He's got more time. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I have a little bit more time considering You're... I can't leave my house. Right, so, you're assigned um, movies. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm, a, I'm assigned. I literally turn in, I turn in my reports. Uh, <laughs> I'm like, and be like, ah, you get a B today. It was all right. <laughs> yeah. But here, here's my, here's my two movies here's for the week. Here's my movie summary. <laughs> yeah, here's what I enjoyed. Here's what I didn't enjoy. I do think, though, I do agree, though. I think what made Hereditary so good, outside of the acting, um, Tony Collette and um, incredible. Is it Alex? Alex, Alex Wolf. Wolf or Nat? I don't know which Wolf it is. It's I know Wolf, there's right. Alex and Nat, so I don't know which one's which on the top of my head. I got you. Yeah, me neither. Dog. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but uh, their acting was phenomenal. I think yeah. I probably would have walked out of the movie as soon as he uh, broke his nose because that was just too much for me at that point. Oh um, yeah, on the on the ta- uh, on yeah, the desk table. Yeah. Face on the desk. yeah. Oh, that was yeah. that was that was. Oh God, just thinking about that was, was painful. Kim and I got um, so, real, real fucked up by her, like by her on the ceiling in the corner, like where yeah, she's she just hanging there. But oh you gotta, yeah, like, really yeah. pay attention to like see where she's at. <laughs> yeah, because yeah. Got real, I, like, we got real fucked up. Yeah, they darken the movie so much that if you're not paying attention and looking around, that you won't know, you'll miss that. But yeah, that bitch was in my room at night for so long after oh, that. Oh, oh my god. <laughs> yeah, I, I, that, that's in the like corner. Me with the, that's like to this day. That's like me with The Exorcist. Like I have oh, a yeah. feeling. And ever since I heard the story of my uncle, I don't know if I should say this. Now. I'm going to say it anyway. We don't really talk too much. My uncle dropped acid and watched The Exorcist. Oh, what? Boy. <laughs> and he's like, let me tell you something, dude. On purpose? Yes. My uncle is stupid, for one. That's, that's <laughs> oh one thing Oh, my God. Know. But he said, so terrifying. dude. He was like, dude, that bitch was sitting right next to me, man. It was not cool. <laughs> and I was like, you're nuts. Oh, my God. I was God. like, I could barely walk through that. And going to the maze in Halloween Horror Nights was, an, it was like, that was the closest to real life I got to that. And that was a lot for me. I had to bring a fucking rosary with me going through that maze because I was not, I was oh, like, be gone, man. devil, because I'm not doing this shit. <laughs> I love Did it. Did it work? Did the rosary oh, work? Oh, yeah, because I walked out. I'm like, I feel good. I feel better. Okay. Even though I saw a Ouija board, I'm good. 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 You know, I'm glad it worked. Would have knocked the bitch out, but you know. <laughs> <laughs> There's certain horror characters that I look at. I'm just like, oh god. If I saw that in real life, I'd probably have an instant heart attack and die. Oh, for sure. She's one of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For sure. People crawling on the ceiling in general. Oh, god. Kim can't do it. Goodbye. She can't do it. She wants See you her. Later. She wants her feet and everyone else's feet on the, on the ground. ground. <laughs> yep. On just, the ground. On the ground. Nope. Not for um, me. Goodbye. We talked a little bit about this on our channel last week, but uh, I don't know how, how big of a fan you ladies are with this event, but me and Sammy love it dearly. Uh, not Scary Farm, of course. The latest haunt in the haunts to get canceled. Um, yeah, I know. Very I actually sad. have never been to that one. Never been to yeah. Knott's, huh? Mm-hmm. Eric, Eric took me there uh, the first birthday that we celebrated together. Nice. He took me to Not Scary Farm. Uh, and the people, I had never been to anything like that ever. Um, and so the people that like slide around on the ground with those like the little sliders, the slider things, those fucked me up pretty bad. <laughs> like I had a like multiple heart attacks from those people. And the problem is, is like, as soon as one of them sees that they get a big reaction from you, then they all gravitate Gang towards up on you. you. So it was they just do. super, super fun for everyone around me. Because I was just... <laughs> but me. The whole time. Yeah. Uh, but luckily when Kim's with me, Kim's the same way whenever we go to haunts that like we just cannot <laughs> keep our shit together. So we, people are just constantly... Just content for the Knights of Horror next haunt season. Literally those people. Like we are those fucking people yeah. that scream the entire time. Yeah. We like claw onto each other. We like run for our lives. And it's yeah. bizarre because it's like we watch horror movies literally every week and talk about horror all the time. Yeah. But like at a haunt, like we are so scared. I'm always we so re- scared. <laughs> we get really fucked up. And there's like a there's like a beacon on us by that point. Yeah. <laughs> that we're targeted like, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. I think we just found a I think we're gonna have to start a new series on the channel when Haunt Season returns. Uh Nights of Horror and Kim and Kent do uh, haunts. Oh Done. my god, that'd be so fun. That would be awesome. Guys will make fun We're of us. We're gonna so have much. to talk after this because we, we got a buttload of ideas this podcast alone. I love it. We could have those cameras, you know, where it's like the face cam. The, ca- yeah. Yeah. the GoPros. The GoPros. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll yeah, get, yeah, we'll yeah. Get, I have I have one right now, so we're already good. We're already at a start. Yeah. 
That was the Great. that was the goal for Sammy. Actually, I I didn't think he was gonna be as tough as he was this year because he had never gone to those really, forever. Like he only been to really? Red Tear. And turns out he's a fan of them now. <laughs> he loves. I mean, he still gets scared, mm-hmm. but he's not nearly as bad as I thought. Yeah, I really thought. I, don't, I mean, I know that she's uh, not in the the best place right now, uh, Miss Ellen DeGeneres. But um, oh yeah. yeah, yeah, that's yeah. neither here nor there. Um, but Andy, I don't know if you guys have ever seen him go through a maze. I really anticipated oh, him I being have. like that. It's great. Yeah, because um, uh, he's that's comedy. He's hysterical. I really thought that was going to be me because I can I cannot watch more <laughs> movies like. You can ask Tony, like, I'm literally like this the entire time. Like, <laughs> just like, if I could record in the theater, I so would. That's how yeah. funny it is. That's content of its own. Yeah, it's I like was we're like opposites. <laughs> I know. Yeah. yeah, and I went to them and I was like, oh, it was kind of like, oh, they got me there. Like, oh, they got me with the jump or whatever. But I, it also probably doesn't help that I'm a male um, and they tend to pick on females more. Because they, they yeah. historically get better reactions from females. Yeah. I'm laughing yeah. so hard because so. I've seen some funny stuff happen to him this last haunt season that just made me die. <laughs> he's so like, funny. he's been, he'll, he'll yes. like, he's no, okay. I'm going to share it, Sammy. You know where I'm going with this. <laughs> Wait, before we get there, though, um, I'm just going back to more movies here for a quick second before we get there. Is I don't know what I'm going to do now that I'm away from Tony. Because he was the only reason why I would go see a horror movie in <laughs> the right. theater. Um, oh. be- um, because now we're six would, hours apart. I would force him to go. Yeah, yeah. well, yeah, I would also get forced to go. But now I'm like, I don't know if I have the guts to walk into a theater and watch a horror movie because that's really terrifying to me. Because at least if I have someone with me, I'm like, okay, like I'm, we can fight out of this together. Yeah. But like if I'm yeah. alone, I'm probably not surviving. Yeah. So. It's more scary in the theater too. Mm-hmm. I, yeah, yeah, totally. I'll still, I'll still especially because of. Yeah, it's because of the. I think it's really because of the way that they they mix the audio, um, and it's really just loud. And right. they be having that 4D audio now, so Oof. Yeah. they're all around Dolby you. So it's terrifying. I mean, that being said, watching a horror movie in your house with the lights off by yourself is not not terrifying. It's, <laughs> uh... <laughs> I mean, that majority of those horror movies take place in a house. Yeah, so it's just like putting yeah. you in that scenario, especially if you As watch someone being like home. <laughs> Yeah, I definitely, I definitely agree. Um, that's why I like to watch it, you know, like 1 p.m. on a Saturday. A really great time I'm to watch it. I'm with you. <laughs> that's yeah, what I'm, I do I'm a lot, too. I'm the complete opposite now. I, I turn off all the lights. I get it all ready, and I get in the zone. I get scared, but I have a fun time doing it. Yeah. Um, I'll love. give you a little preview that the movie that I'm going to tell Kim tomorrow is going to fuck her up. Oh. No. Oh, gosh. Actually, ironically... <laughs> Even though she can't say it, that episode came out today, so go watch it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, the episode that came out today is the thing that I'm talking about right now in the past that is your present. <laughs> yes. yes. Double <laughs> trouble today. You got double the dose of Kim and Ket today. You got their <laughs> podcast, and then you got our podcast. Yeah, so there we podcast. go. podcast. Link will be in the description below. Um, <laughs> I know. That's, that's great when you record oh. in the past, but you know something's going to happen in the future, so you, you can announce it. Yes. Yeah. Um, uh, definitely. So we do. Ha- we're almost cutting up a- a time here. I know that we had a time limit. So y- you want to wrap that up? Yes. The last thing we'll <laughs> talk about. I mean, we're all devastated about knots. Sammy, uh, you are the best. You're just like, is. come on, buddy. <laughs> Slow <laughs> claps. I Slow love it. Claps. We're good. Uh, <laughs> Someone's got to keep him. Uh, got to keep him tame. Keep me on I topic. love it. Yeah. That's why. So, I really, yes. That's why I really hired him. Um, it's the best. Right? You guys have a. You guys have a great relationship. It makes yeah, me very happy. Great dynamic. I mean, we learn from the best. So, oh. <laughs> um, anyway, so the last thing we wanted to say for last, because, um, you know, this was something that is a staple for Kim and Kit on their show was the, uh, Sam Funko pop that's coming out. Yeah. yeah. And it looks really good. Right. Like it Very looks, cute. it looks great. We, uh, Eric and I, uh, this may be the first Funko Pop that we get, I think, because in general, like the Funko Pop isn't like our v- like aesthetic. Like as you can see, Eric goes more for like the realistic action right. figure, and I go for like, for dolls. The- he just gets the realistic dolls, right? Exactly. And I go with the stuffed animal version of things. Like right. I like squishy <laughs> things. Actual dolls. Yeah. So, uh, the, but the, yeah, I don't understand Funko Pop. I don't get the op the opeal. Um, you will when you start collecting but, them. Just saying. I mean, but I, it's I, yeah. I am already gonna um, 
pre-ordered this one. Yes. Yeah. Spirit Hall. It's so definitely, you know what I relate it? Well, but Kim, see, this is why Kim's, this is why Kim's tough. We joke about this a lot. She doesn't watch movies more than once. She doesn't necessarily like re-binge a show. She doesn't like collect things. Like that's not really her thing. And so like the idea of collecting something is just not, it's just not who Kim is. So I feel Ooh. like I don't like stuff. Kim, yeah, if we she were roommates, like I don't think you could, you would like me because I I yeah. probably watched The Office five times. I've probably seen. I mean, I, mean, I do too. I mean, yeah. I, I'm rewatching yeah, Sons of Anarchy like right now. Yeah, rewatching so it's, the Big it's, Bang Theory, all that good stuff. So I don't know that it that it's that you don't get Funko Pop. It's that I don't think you get collecting. Oh, I don't get collecting. Things. Oh, that's, that's what that's it, it. Is. You're right. You don't you're get right, because right, people right. are into collect it, collecting right. things. Right. You know. Right. And I just want this one because it's meaningful in my heart. Exactly. Well, it's got that's, the, that's what the I'm thing about. Too. It's got a special <laughs> yeah. meaning, like to a special episode that still to this day gets talked about all the time on your show. Um, yeah. From your fans to you guys as well, and I, I mean me. If you can, I mean, you can only see a, a little preview of what I have. I have wow. <laughs> almost 250. Oh, I do see some Funkos. Yeah, I have. Yeah. I have almost 250 of them. Holy bananas! Shut up. That is. That's, wow. Cool. He has problems. I have he has problems. problems. He's collecting. Really, yeah. I, he has a lot of problems. He spends yeah. all of his money there. Most um, of it's, it's, a, it's a bad addiction. Do you know what I just realized is now a new goal? Uh, for Kim and I to be made into our own Funko Pops. I really want you the can do it. Funko Pops. Yes, you, you can, can do, do it. it. Can... Wait, what? You go on their website. You can yeah. do it. You can get scanned and everything. Oh, oh damn! And I know, I... I know, because those are going to be ultra rare. That I'm going to have to have two of my own. Oh, so I'm going to have to get some Kim and Kat Pops too, because they'll probably be worth tons of money. Yes, uh. and then Kim, you'll have a burps map and a Kim and a cat, and you know what? That's the beginning of a collection. collection. <laughs> <laughs> no. Once you, once you get one Funko Pop, you start. Once you them pop, all. you can't stop. I Kim, can't. I was literally about to say that exact thing. Get out <laughs> of my brain, nerds. <laughs> can't stop, man. It's. It, I, I, I'm gonna be honest with you. I used to hate them. I hated them. And then I saw a Deadpool Bob Ross one that I liked a lot. Oh. And that's sweet. what started the end of the beginning. Deadpool Bob Ross? So so Deadpool, the comic book character. Um, and Bob Ross the painter? Bob Ross yep. the painter. So you I got it. If, if you ever, uh, the Ryan Reynolds films that, that he's done, um, for she a specific, a when they did a teaser for the, the second movie, you can look it up on YouTube, he dressed up as Deadpool, but he was being Bob Ross. Yeah. You can find it on YouTube. Like it's like it's just like how Bob Ross does his shows That's where he amazing. does the painting and everything. Yeah. It was fucking hilarious that it, it was like a big parody of it. So that that's, when I saw that hilarious. pop I was like can't pass that's up a good on one. it. And so That's hilarious. But I think with yeah. this definitely with this Sam one being at Spirit Halloween, that's going to be an exclusive at Spirit Halloween. So whatever uh, abandoned store your Spirit Halloween takes over, go find it. Um, awesome. Yeah. That uh, I think they'll have them online too on their website, but that's definitely one I have to pick up because I think once once it's gone, it's gone. Um, yeah. Oh, for sure. Yeah. But Kim and Kit Funko yeah. Pops. I mean, you let me know because I'll buy some. I'm looking it up tonight. I'm gonna make some. Nice All right. Ones too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No one wants this, bro. Let's I want them. <laughs> <laughs> Sammy, finish us off here, buddy. All right. Well. I want to thank uh, both Kim and Ketrin for joining us today. If you had a great time watching this episode um, and you enjoyed the spirit that they brought, go ahead and check out KK Sam on uh, wherever you get your podcasts. Um, we'll leave a link down here down in the description for y'all wonderful people who have stayed this long. Um, uh, so go ahead and check them out. Um, if you all would ever be super kind, go ahead and hit that like button. Leave a wonderful yes. comment below. Um, and hit that subscribe button if you aren't oh, yeah. already subscribed. Yeah, um, right and don't forget <laughs> to check us out um, on social media at the Knights of War on Twitter and Knights of War on Instagram. How nope. do you, how do you mess it off every <laughs> week? <laughs> I was doing so good. Oh, <laughs> you almost had it. That, that, that's um, his biggest kryptonite right there is he always doesn't remember our social medias. <laughs> well, I, I'm sorry they're not the same. If they were the Three same. Three years, Sammy, we've been doing Knights of War. Well, I've been doing tough. it for like, a little less, but 
that's neither here nor there. We can have um, a conversation later. <laughs> so also, don't forget to follow Kim and Cat on social media, KK Sam Podcast on um, Instagram. Follow them. To keep updated. And to Twitter. What doing. And Twitter. Um, yeah, we're KK Sam Podcast on, uh, on both. Everything. All across the board. Yeah, on everything. Yeah. Yep. So go ahead and follow them to oh, be aware. you make it easy for your followers? <laughs> Listen, I'm like, oh, here. Is it a the or is it not a the? Listen, Twitter <laughs> wouldn't let me put the the. I ran out of space, okay? Oh, yeah. I was lucky Twitter's to get Nights of Horror. Like that. Yeah. 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 Um, but make sure to follow uh, Kim and Ket all across the board, KK Sam Podcast. To be aware every time they put up a new podcast and what they're doing with their, their lives. They do a lot of fun stuff on their um their story, asking people questions or a lot of the fun filters that I enjoy looking at my story before I go to bed. Um, yeah. Can I also plug our Patreon? Plug in quick? the Patreon. Uh, plug so we, it all. We we have a Patreon and, and one of the things that the pandemic has done for us is give us time to like really come up with some really cool stuff that we're doing over there. Um, so uh, go check that out. Uh, Kim and Cat Stay Live maybe on Patreon and we have really cool bonus content over there bone so. can yeah we bone go live can. on there a lot which is really fun and interactive and live stuff so. uh yep. ladies it seems like we have a lot to discuss of, of all the ideas that we had so uh that's definitely gonna be something for the future i know thank you for this business meeting i know right <laughs> business business slash news meeting that was how it yeah. was yeah uh, isn't really, that what zoom's for isn't that yeah, what Zoom, exactly. that's what zoom's that's for, true, yeah. that's what zoom's <laughs> for <laughs> so it's like you know we, we we took advantage of it look at uh, us yeah. we're professionals there right? we go I, I, I forgot to wear my tie but um, <laughs> ladies, thank you so much for taking the time, uh, exactly one year to the date to come on and so great, be part so of it. It looks cool. like this is going to be our new yearly tradition where we see where yeah, everyone's up to. Yeah, this so, is so fun. Uh, I love thank you that. so much. We love you guys so much. Keep doing the awesome work that you guys are doing because we're going to keep tuning in every week. Um, right back at you, buddies. Thank you so much. Uh, again, like Sammy said, if you guys enjoyed, leave some comments, likes, and all that fun stuff. And we will see you guys next week for another episode of the Mindless Sport Podcast. Bye. Bye.